This is NDTV and you are watching NDTV Prime. Let's get started with CNB Bazaar Buzz. I am joining you with a brand new episode and this is what is coming your way. Maruti Suzuki launches the new Desire in its third generation. The car is off to a big start with 33,000 bookings already. And we bring you a complete look at the new edition from the Toyota Innova Krista, the Touring Sport. So let's start off then with the Maruti Suzuki Desire. It is a brand new car and we've shown you a preview before so you already sort of know what it looks like. It is roomier, it's prettier and it drops the Swift name but it's the prices, that's what we were waiting for and typically Maruti is really aggressive when it comes to pricing. Not quite that aggressive when it came to the new Desire. It just shows a different sort of a confidence in this product that Maruti seems to have. There are more variants because now you have AMT that's been thrown into the mix for both petrol and diesel. Here are all the details. Maruti Suzuki have sold over 13 lakh Swift Desires in the last 10 years and now India's largest automaker has launched the third generation Desire in India. The new Desire drops the Swift name for the first time as it now gets its own unique identity. The Desire is available with a 1.2-litre petrol engine that makes 82 bhp of peak power and 113 nm of peak torque and a 1.3-litre turbo diesel that makes 74 bhp and 190 Nm of peak torque. You could also opt for a 5-speed automatic or AMT gearbox or a 5-speed manual on both the engines. So here is how the Desire is priced. Petrol power Desire with a manual gearbox is priced at 5 lakh 45,000 rupees to 7 lakh 94,000 rupees while the AMT petrol is priced from 6 lakh 76,000 to 8 lakh 41,000 rupees. The petrol automatic desire is now actually cheaper than the last generation version as this has the AMT whereas the last gen had the CVT gearbox which is by definition a more expensive piece of technology. The diesel on the other hand is more expensive variant to variant by exactly 1 lakh rupees. The diesel manual ranges from 6 lakh 45,000 rupees to 8 lakh 94,000 rupees, while the diesel AMT is priced at 7 lakh 76,000 rupees to 9 lakh 41,000 rupees. Now that we've brought you all the details about the prices of the new Desire, let's talk a little more about the car itself. Let's start from the rear because, of course, this is a sub 4 meter subcompact sedan, and the integration of the boot is actually much nicer than what we've seen in the past. Um, it is, in fact, the best looking desire that we've ever had. The desire gets a lot more chrome to make it more premium and the LED tail lamps come as standard on all models. You also get a set of 15-inch diamond cut alloy wheels on the higher spec cars while the base models get 15-inch steel wheels instead. Now, moving to the front, again, a lot more chrome on, the, on this generation of the desire. Um, a lot sleeker, a lot lower in the front and I think this sort of new grille also looks much nicer. It will be on the new Swift as well which comes at the Auto Expo next year. You do get daytime running lights on this top of the line version and LED headlamps as well. The new Desire gets 163mm of ground clearance which might be a slight issue on poor rural or semi-urban roads especially if loaded up with 5 passengers and their luggage. Now the interiors on the new Desire are a lot more premium as compared to that on the outgoing model. For example, you still get the two-tone black and beige uh, combination and sadly there is no leather interior even on this ZXI Plus variant. But you do get a little more premium fabric upholstery as compared to the lower variants. And of course you do get this lovely touchscreen infotainment system which we've seen on the Ignis, we've seen it on the Brezza as well. Uh, it is surrounded by a gloss black instrument panel and it gets Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so both of those and of course you do get navigation as standard on this particular system. The other highlights include a flat bottom steering wheel with wooden inserts and the same wooden inserts are also found on the dashboard and it does lend a premium look and feel to the new Desire. 
Now the new Desire is based on the same platform that the Balino is, which means it will have a lot more space in the back as compared to the outgoing model, and it does. It is 40mm wider than before, which means more shoulder room for rear passengers, and the rear leg room has been increased by 55mm. You also get rear AC vents, which in my opinion is one of the most important features for any car in India, and you get a fold-down central armrest, which is great because a lot of people still use the Desire as a chauffeur-driven vehicle. Now you also get little safety features like the Isofix. This is a new generation uh, you know, platform, and uh, as far as investments are concerned, we have invested uh, close to 1,000 crores uh, in the entire development of the model. The new desire in the diesel spec is now the most fuel-efficient car in India, returning 28.4 km per litre. The petrol, on the other hand, is less fuel-efficient at 22 km per litre, but both are more fuel-efficient compared to the last generation model. Maruti Suzuki has no intention of launching a CNG version of this car anytime soon, but considering the market, we expect one soon enough. The new Desire is made at the Maruti Suzuki factory at Manisar. The factory makes about 650 units of the car every day and the older outgoing Desire will also be made in parallel and be exclusively available for the taxi market. We had about 16% mix of commercial segment in our Swift Desire. So we expect that kind of demand there and that would be positioned as Tor S. And the S stands for sedan, and uh, we will be able to manage on both the fronts. With all uh, kind of uh, features, uh, styling, and uh, wonderful powertrains, and options of two-pedal technology, uh, we have got today 33,000 bookings uh, from the marketplace. And uh, I think once uh, we have declared the price today, and uh, car is available at our showroom from today onwards uh, for the customers to see and uh, take it as drive, uh, I'm sure the pace of bookings will increase further. Currently, dealers are quoting about an 8-10 to 10 week period for delivery, but expect this to go up exponentially once actual buyers see the car in the metal at their local dealerships. As always on Bazaar Buzz, I like to take as many of your questions as I can. Let's get on with those answers. Let's get started. First up, it's a question from Ankur, who has posted on carandbike.com. I'm a first-time buyer and want to buy a car with maximum safety features under a budget of 10 lakh rupees. Is the Ford EcoSport good enough? Well, the simple answer to that question, yes, it is. It's well-built. It also has safety equipment as standard. Of course, you'd have to opt for the uh, fully loaded Titanium Plus variant to get the six airbags, but that puts you over 10 lakh rupees. Now a question from RK Mishra, who's posted on our Facebook page. I'm confused between the Hyundai Creta and the Mahindra XUV500. I can also go for the Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza to save a few lakhs, but I'm looking for good performance and safety. It's nice to see that most of you are concerned about safety equipment. And the reason I smiled is because, well, you're talking about three best sellers from three different segments. The Vitara Brezza is a subcompact SUV. And uh, of course, you've got the Creta that's ruling the charts when it comes to the compact space, the Mahindra XUV500 is a bigger vehicle. So first, I think you need to decide what your usage pattern is, what your real requirement is, and also the kind of parking you have uh, where you can put this car. So think about those three things. And then uh, after that, you've got to also consider, do you really need the three row space of an XUV? Because then, by the way, that becomes the best option. The XUV is good value for money. It really loads in a lot of features and it's recently been updated with uh, some great connectivity options as well. So yes, it makes sense to consider an XUV. The Hyundai Creta I've always felt is a little bit overpriced, but it's an absolute bestseller. It's compact and it's very efficient. It's also pretty good when it comes to safety. And on the Vitara Brezza, of course, enough has been said. It remains the runaway success. But uh, really, if you're thinking about an SUV in its true sense, then it's gotta be one of the other two cars and that will come down to the size of the car that really works for you. So think about that. Looks like we're going to stay with the SUV theme. Hamza is uh, asking on Facebook again, I am an off-road enthusiast and want to buy an SUV for this purpose. I'm confused between the Tata Xenon and the Isuzu D-Max. 
Now, first things first, neither of those are SUVs, they're really pickup trucks, but uh, of course they give you certain off-road or rugged road capability. That's what these vehicles are designed for. They're designed for uh, just a little bit of rugged use and not necessarily hardcore off-roading. If that's what you want, then really the Mahindra Thar or the Force Gurkha is what you should be looking at. But then that doesn't really become a practical everyday car, not as a pickup to a certain extent, but that's where the D-Max has an advantage. It has that uh, double cab, which gives you the comfort of an everyday car and yet the convenience of a pickup. It's also got the grunt to be able to go off-road. So yes, between those two, I'd say the Isuzu makes more sense. Another question from our website, it's Anshul, and guess what, it's again about the Ford EcoSport. When will the facelift launch in India? Now, we're all waiting for it, and uh, initially Ford had indicated that it will only be around December, but now I have news for you that uh, it's trying to just speed that process up a little bit because uh, there's a lot of speculation around that car, a lot of anticipation, and Ford would like to cash in on the festive season as well, so which is why it will arrive in time for Diwali. Pawan Kumar is asking me on Twitter about the Honda HRV. When will it launch in India and what will it compete against? That's a good question, the second part of it. The when will it launch? Well, we've been waiting for it for a while. And from saying it will not come to India, at least Honda has now progressed to thinking about bringing it to India. So while it's not going to be in a hurry, and it'll certainly not be this year, uh, it could be something that Honda will bring us next year. Because remember that car also shares its platform with the city, with the Jazz, and now with the WRV. And so it gives it a lot to play with when it comes to just productionizing that car and keeping costs low. Now, what will it compete against? Well, typically it would have to compete against uh, the likes of the Creta because really when you start putting it in a segment higher, it may be equipped to be in a segment higher, but then you've got much bigger cars, Jeep Compass, Hyundai Tucson. So really the Hyundai Creta has to be the primary target, even though I know that Honda already has the BRV to play in that space. So the BRV could be the value offering, the HRV, the slightly more premium car. And one more question from our website. It's Varun who's asking about uh, being a first time buyer and having a budget of about six and a half lakh rupees. The two cars that he's confused between, the Tata Tiago and the Maruti Suzuki Ignis, what should he go for? Now the two cars are both individualistically really different and quirky. But what's nice is that they are distinctly different for you to be able to really make up your mind based on what works for you. So first, go test drive both of them because they're both capable products. I think the advantage on the Ignis would be its slightly taller riding height and also the fact that uh, it gives you a lot more options in terms of drivetrain. It's also fairly stylish and uh, you know allows you to customize with those roof wraps and of course the contrast roof option. So it's a nice young urban sort of a car. The uh, Tiago becomes the slightly more practical family car. I think it gives you a slight more comfort in the back seat as well, though uh, you'll not find the cabin size very different. It's also well equipped. It has a nice ride quality too. So as an individual usage car, the Ignis becomes, I think, the more practical choice. But if it's a family car you're looking for, lean towards the Tiago. Time for a very short break here on CNB Bazaar Buzz. We come back and show you the Toyota Innova Crista Touring Sport. Stay tuned.